really can assume that the vata is up too high. Now, what would you do with that? When vata energy is too high and out of balance, there are things that we can do to bring back balance. Because if you go back to the chart of the three bars going up and down, in a perfect world, we would be considered what's called tridoshic. Yeah. Dosha means each of those characteristics. Kapha, Pitta, and Vata are a dosha. It's just the right. name that says them. Like your name is Annabella. Your dosha is Kapha, uh, Vata. Well, in a perfect world, we'd like to have balance among those three things. But more importantly, disease and inflammation and dysfunction tends to occur when one of those doshas is out of balance. And we know that anorexia is a bit of a sickness. It's a condition, but we know that it's ayurvedically something that um, can be characterized by vata going too high. Now vata needs to be balanced. How can we balance vata? Well, first to understand what vata is. Vata is the middle dosha that is governed by wind. Vata when out of balance, vata, this is the best way to describe it, is that when vata is out of balance, they feel cold and they don't want to feel cold on the back of their neck. When vata is out of balance, they get scatterbrained. They don't know which way to go. They do this for a second, then they run to the next thing. That is vata imbalance. Now, if you stick with just simplistically those two things, what do we do to cure way elevated vata, which will definitely lead to anorexic, anorexia for those people who are predisposed towards it? Well, because of that disjointed mental approach, we want to practice chanting, we want to practice meditation techniques, we want to use all oh, the best thing from there, it said the best thing, oil. definitely oil. I read just earlier that something called Lang Lang Oil, which is spelled Y-L-A-N-G, Lang Lang Oil is very good, but they say the best thing for Vata, and though I've seen in my practice, I've been in practice 26 years and dealt with a lot of this, is to have Vata do a journal. And by journaling, they get to get very organized and it cuts down on the scatterbrained type of um, energy that leads to them wanting to control their lives. Because as you know, anorexia is an attempt to control. To control. But if you don't have to control your body and you can do it through a journal mm -hmm. and creating chance and organization in your life, which is what vata imbalance is lacking. It makes, it makes so it's, much sense. It's really yeah. quite perfect. It works yeah. very, very well. This is a very advanced form of healing that yes. works great. And Dr. Keller, what about someone who is uh, suffering from bulimia? Bulimia is equally fascinating in my opinion, and I've worked with it quite a bit. Um, bulimia is when there's a pitta, out of, a pitta imbalance. Pitta is that middle dosha, a little bit more muscular than the vata type, a little bit less muscular and fleshy than the kapha type. It's more of like a middle ground. These people are driven. I tend to have a lot of pitta energy um, when I'm out of balance. They are hot. They're run by heat. Heat produces imbalance. Now, the interesting thing is pitta has in the best control of digestion, ironically, of all the three doshas. And digestion is best when the body is hot. That's why pitta has very good digestion. Now, pitta looking to equally control their body um, when out of balance will utilize their digest supreme digestive control to rid and control their environment, which obviously is the purging, re purging the refusal of food mm. through control once again. Now, the way to help, which I assume would that be your next question? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> okay. I didn't want to jump. I didn't want <laughs> to pitta. About control. There's a perfect example of pitta. I just kind of assumed, which I shouldn't do. But um, when pitta is out of control, the body is too hot. It's trying too hard to control its environment and make sure that everything gets done. And just by the very act of purging, you're controlling what you're allowing in your body. Right. And so to reduce pitta in the case of a young person who's got too much there, they're, 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 I've seen the, the type a million times, they're, um, um, they're playing multiple sports, they're in uh, high honors classes because they are the most achievers, um, the highest achievers, and the refusal of food is another part of their control of being able to maintain that high level of efficiency. Mm -hmm. This is the pitta personality to a T. Yes. Um, 
that pitta energy is too high and is in balance, if not in balance, needs to be brought down. What do we do to help reduce the pitta and bring up the other doshas? Mm -hmm. We use cooling foods. What are cooling foods? Foods like yogurt, foods like cucumber. Uh, cucumber is excellent. Um, watermelon? Watermelon is okay. Watermelon is red. So typically in the pitta diet, because colors are significant, mm -hmm. we, want to, we want to avoid colors that are red, yellow, and uh, orange, such as orange peppers, yellow, um, uh, generally. There are some many, ex there's a number of exceptions to the rule. Um, as somebody who's read from watermelon, watermelon occupies the ability in small amounts. This is where you really need to have an Ayurvedic specialist right. help you right. with this because there may be a three or two or four ounce serving of watermelon that could help but after that it tends to aggravate and the only way to do that is to start off with very small experimental amounts so why other uh, cooling um, food items can we said cucumber uh, yogurt yogurt ghee is considered because this is an Indian science the, mm -hmm. the ancients used ghee which we would uh, extrapolate I guess over to use butter is okay Milk products tend to be okay for kapha in uh, excuse me for for Beep. pitta, but not with kapha because we're going to get to that in a minute. The kapha body type builds up phlegm and congestion very but fast. Before we go to that, so to wrap up because it's very interesting that one of the healing tips for a vata imbalance, and in this case that we're talking about eating disorders, somebody suffering from anorexia is the oil. So it's Absolutely. more about the physical touch, correct? True, and also um, both vata and kapha need to have loving touch to know that they are supported and they are um, they're loved. But for the pita, pita body type, and those who are suffering from uh, pita imbalance, and those suffering from bulimia, we're talking about food items, things that can cool their body. There's more. In their digestive system. There are other suggestions as mm -hmm. far as activities, mm -hmm. like we mentioned the journaling for vata. Mm -hmm. We mentioned the meditation and the chanting. For pitta, which needs to slow also along with vata, because those two types are very similar in this mm -hmm. regard, and there's a lot of overlap. Um, you, we have to um, utilize meditation with pitta. We have to utilize slower vocal tones. We have mm -hmm. to utilize movies that are joyous, but not too exciting. Mm -hmm. We have to utilize neutral foods, like brown rice, broccoli, maybe fish, and those on the cooling side. We have to avoid conflict. Mm -hmm. So please listen up. Avoid, stop arguing and fighting with your loved one and then with everybody. And last but not least, those people who eat compulsively or overeat mm. where is the imbalance I would assume after we talked about vata and pita that it's a kapha imbalance is that correct it's definitely uh, consistently related to kapha kapha as we know is the third dosha and it tends to um, I identify people who are a little bit smaller a tiny bit wider than the pitta or the, mm -hmm. the longer vata and um, definitely have a little bit more flesh on their body. These people move slower, more methodically. They're very reliable. Every dosha has wonderful things about it and things that need to be balanced that aren't so wonderful. Kapha's beauty is that they are reliable. They have great endurance. They have tremendous retention for knowledge. They are um, so the sweetest and least reactive, which I particularly like because somebody who suffers from pitta imbalances at times, I love the kapha energy which brings my kapha up and reduces pitta. And somebody who is dealing with compulsive um, eating? Compulsive eating is definitely related to kapha imbalance. What we want to do with kapha is bring more um, pitta energy into their body which will naturally reduce the kapha. Kapha is prone to congestion and slow movement. They have to avoid foods that have a lot of dairy and weight to them. The very uh, things that the pitta imbalance should avoid are the very things that kapha should be taking. Green peppers, red peppers, cayenne, things of a red nature. Um, not red meat because in the Vedic world, the red meat is almost out for everybody because of their sacred um, understanding of the energy of the animal, of the cow. But um, 
kapha needs to be energized. It's suggested greatly for imbalance of kapha that they do intense exercise. It's suggested, but believe it or not, that brisk walks into light jogs are really mm -hmm. are, are essential for um, bringing up the pitta energy and reducing the kapha. Now, something just um, came across my mind. If Can someone have a kapha imbalance and not necessarily have compulsive eating? Absolutely. Kapha okay. imbalance is seen in a number of ways. In fact, before I started getting involved with um, eating disorders, I witnessed and um, helped people with kapha imbalances all the time. A couple of close friends of mine, you know, difficulty getting motivated, mm. afternoon sluggishness, which is very hard for the pitta person to understand because we don't experience it. But one of the best things for kapha is to bring pitta energy into your body and into your um, lifestyle because that pitta energy activates kapha and lets them experience higher degrees of kapha, um, pitta themselves but also increase their and improve their um, efficiency and their productivity and the vice the, the reverse is true for pitta i mean pitta wants to bring more kapha into their body into their lifestyle and body because our inflammation well my i'll use myself as an example inflammation from pitta goes up when there's too much activity which is the exact opposite of what kapha needs in order to raise the pitta. So um, people can really experience balance with one another when you experience the relationship element of these doshas as well. So to um, conclude here, we were very focused today on eating disorders, but it doesn't mean that if, it doesn't mean that you or someone you love doesn't have a an imbalance mm. in their doshas, right? True. They can experiment other type of illnesses. Well, this brings up something I wanted to ask you. I mean, being that you are an eating disorder specialist, um, what common threads do you see that are consistent among the three types of eating disorders that we've discussed today? There must be some consistencies. Absolutely. I'd love to know that in your group. Yes, the common denominator is low self-esteem and they suffer from anxiety and depression. It's also very common within the, the, these three different types of eating disorders. Mm -hmm. So the root, I would say, that it's common through all the eating disorders, not only anorexic, bulimia, and binge disorder, is low self-esteem. And what do you do with those people um, that helps to raise their self-esteem? Correct. My approach is mm -hmm. holistic in nature. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I help. Yes, I help them connect with their true self. There is a there is a disconnection, and they are living from their false self, their ego, and they believe that that's their identity. Mm -hmm. So I help them connect with really who they are. They are not who they pretend to be, or were told to be, or the role that they are fulfilling. Mm. And when they find a connection with their heart and their soul and their divine plan, their self-esteem is immediately strengthened. Because right now, when they are suffering from depression, let's say, they are connected to their false self. Mm. So that, that is a way we do it through exercises. We do it through meditation. Mm -hmm. We do it by connecting with uh, their inner child mm -hmm. and tapping into those past traumas that are really preventing them from connecting with their true self and living the, tr the life that they truly deserve. Well, I have to tell you that the um the people that we've worked on together have had nothing but great things to say about the productivity they've experienced by working with you. And I want to say thank Likewise. you. Likewise. <laughs> and thank you. Sure. Thank you. So, Dr. Keller, if somebody wants to contact you, where they can, where can they reach you? Um, on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays.